Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob where I shake my brain nipple so I can get some of that YouTube money so I can offer you free hands-on technology education. So I run Silicon Dojo, silicondojo.com. We're having our first class in Durham, North Carolina next week uh, on AI and LLM using Python and a llama, that kind of stuff. Basically, it's a place where you can RSVP, show up, and you get hands-on education to learn how technology actually works. So, unlike our politicians, at least you have a vague idea how these things do what the hell they're doing. So anyways, that's why I am here. I think this is an interesting story to be talking about today with basically just the whole question of things like uh, the uh, NVIDIA's evaluation um, and uh, the whole question about like what is the value in AI hardware. Right, so uh, the, the value of AI hardware currently has gone through the roof. There is a tremendous amount of demand for AI hardware. So when you look at AI hardware, there's two types of hardware. There's hardware for training, so actually training a model, and there's hardware for inference. And so inference is actually basically running the model. And so one of the reasons that NVIDIA is worth $4 trillion is they, they produce the, the best AI hardware out there. Essentially, they've been building GPUs since the 1990s. What people found out a long time ago, I mean, long, long 20 some odd years ago, uh, is that actually GPUs are really good for the specific tasks that are required uh, for artificial intelligence. And so they, they were, they basically, they were focused on this one specific technology. This one specific technology was good for video gamers, which was profitable enough and also happened to be good for the AI revolution, which has driven them to a $4 trillion valuation. The issue is, is their equipment now is incredibly expensive, right? A, a single GPU uh, can be $40,000. A server to run uh, the GPUs can be $200,000, right? When you start thinking about at scale, when companies start buying a lot of these, uh, it gets to be really, really, really expensive. And so even for the large companies, companies like Meta and Google and Amazon, <clears throat> they're starting to look at basically how how they can cut their costs, right? Okay, you know, uh, you know, uh, in, Nvidia is the best; it is the gold standard. But the whole question you got to ask yourself in the IT world is: But you do, do you really need the gold standard? Like, yes, you could buy a twenty thousand dollars Xeon server in order to share files for your company, or you could buy a fifty dollars Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Here's the thing, if all you're doing is sharing files in your company, a little FTP or a um, Samba server or whatever else, you know, frankly, a $50 Raspberry Pi might do you better. And then you can take that $19,950 or $19,950 that you save uh, and spend it on something else that you really care about. Like a yacht. Well, not a yacht, maybe a boat. Anyways, so that's what a lot of companies are doing right now. They're basically going out there and they're trying to figure out more cost-effective ways uh, of providing uh, AI services. I've talked about this before. There's an interesting company called Grok, G-R-O-Q, not G-R-O-K. G-R-O-K is the X-A-I thing. Uh, G-R-O-Q, Grok, uh, they basically create uh, inference uh, chips. All they do is inference. Uh, and their idea is they can basically build a data center in something like six weeks. From when you say go to when when you get an AI data center, it's like literally six. So that that's their kind of claim to fame is deploy shit really like deploy infrastructure fuck quick, right? Uh, and so again, it becomes an interesting thing of looking at, uh, you know, where we're going forward uh, with artificial intelligence. I feel like so many people, like when they looked at AI up until this point in time, like there's this idea that we know how the architecture has to be designed. Like, like somehow, somehow the AI is already a mature tech stack. And so we know you have to buy Blackwell, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I think the curious thing to take a look at is no, it is an incredibly immature uh, tech stack. Uh, and the reality is, is people are trying to figure out the most effective way to deploy hardware. And I think uh, the hardware that we're going to be using in five years uh, is not going to be looking like the hardware stack uh, that we're currently using. Uh, so that's where Meta comes in. Meta, always doing what Meta's doing. Why is Meta doing it? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But they give us something to talk about. And, and I do have to say, Mark Zuckerberg is not nearly as infuriating as Elon Musk. <laughs> The one thing I will give Mark Zuckerberg, he doesn't piss me off nearly as much as Elon Musk does. So there you go. So anyways, Meta plans to buy chip startup Revos to boost semiconductor efforts. Uh, the other interesting thing to be thinking about with this too, 
It's like with this whole AI war that's going on, right? So there's the United States versus China, right? So the US is worried that China will get AI supremacy and then everything will go to hell. So we have this AI arms race with China. But then Europe's over here. <laughs> And Europe's like, well, we don't really trust any of you bastards anymore. And so they're trying to build their own AI stacks. And you got like the Mid Middle East, you got like Abu Dhabi. And they're like, well, if everybody else is doing it, we're going to build our tech stacks too. And I think that's one of the interesting things is like with the, the hardware, right? Again, the whole idea of like what hardware stack is going to win at the end of the day and what is actually you know, going to work. And one of the cur curious things with Meta and Revos is they actually use uh, the RISC-V stack. Um, so normally when you're talking about processors, uh, you're talking about x86 processors, or you're talking about like the NVIDIA GPUs, whatever the architecture theirs, theirs is, or the, uh, the ARM processors. Uh, these are proprietary uh, architecture designs uh, for chips. Um, the curious thing is with this, with Meta, is they're actually using RISC-V. So a lot of people have asked, Eli, what about RISC-V? And generally my answer is, Meh. it exists. The one thing I can tell you about RISC-V is that it exists. But the curious thing with RISC-V though, is that it's an open source uh, processor standard. So basically with ARM, so what ARM is, it's a proprietary standard, but they license it out. So that's why, that's why Apple uses ARM processors with their M series or other companies use ARM, right? They are an ARM architecture that is licensed, right? With x86, they generally don't license it. There's a weird thing going on with AMD. x86 is basically owned by Intel. So the curious thing is if you start talking about RISC-V, this is an, this is an open source hardware standard which again, starts to become interesting with things like nation states. And again, when we talk about nation states, so many times we talk about nation states as United States or China or Europe. Europe is not a country, but just Europe, right? But it's curious though, there's a lot of smaller nation states out there. I mean, there's the Cambodias of the world, there's the South Africa's of the world, there's the Brazil's of the world. And one of the interesting things to just consider here, like if you start pushing AI down a RISC-V open source hardware stack path, what becomes curious, does, th does that then put customized AI hardware into the realm of what a, a country like Brazil can take and run with? And that's where I find this whole AI revolution thing to be really weird. And like how, how it's sold, right? This idea that America has to win. And, and my question, like, I think the very concept of that is wrong. Like, I don't think this, this is a winnable thing. Like, could you imagine somebody trying to win the pen and paper war? Who, whoever gets pen and paper supremacy rules the world, right? That'd be kind of stupid. What, you're, you're what? You're, you're, say, you're saying the United States is gonna corner pens. I mean, maybe for a little bit of time, <laughs> but probably not that long. Right, and that's the kind of thing that I've been thinking about this whole AI thing. Like the more there, there's so much focus on the, the United States has to own this whole concept of a technology, and the more that I talk with real like like scientists and real engineers, the more I see, the more I honestly question if that even makes sense. If that even makes sense. Is that a sensical thing to say? So anyways, Meta plans to buy chip startup Revos to boost semiconductor efforts. Meta intends to acquire the chip startup Revos to bolster its in-house semiconductor efforts, a social media company said on Tuesday. The Santa Clara, California-based startup, which is backed by Intel CEO Lip Bhutan, is focused on designing chips based on the RISC-V architecture, an open source alternative to the architecture made by ARM, Intel, and AMD. Well, there you go. It is kind of funny that the, uh, the startup is backed by Intel's CEO um, is doing this. But anyway, that just, I don't know. 
Uh, Rebos brings expertise in building full-stack AI systems, Meta's Vice President of Engineer Yi Jun Yisong said in a LinkedIn post. Meta aims to expand work on the Meta Training and Inference Accelerator, its family of custom-built in-house chip accelerators. He said the chip startup was near new funding at about $2 billion valuation. Uh, Meta has been one of Rebos' biggest customers and had been talking to the startup about a deal. Quote, our custom silicon work is progressing quickly, and this will further accelerate our efforts, a Meta spokesperson said when contacted by Reuters. Uh, Reuters exclusively reported in March that Meta was testing its first in-house chip for training AI systems as the company seeks to cut infrastructure costs linked to its spending on advanced tools uh, because, you know, NVIDIA costs a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> That, see, the nice part for NVIDIA is when you can sell a single GPU for $40,000, you get to make a hell of a lot of money. The problem is, is when you sell a single GPU for $40,000, a lot of people start questioning whether they really want to spend $40,000 on a single GPU. And that's where you start getting the competition, which is one of the things that I'm curious about with what will happen with NVIDIA going in the future, right? There's this idea, again, there's this mentality, NVIDIA has cornered the market. Hey, remember when Research in Motion cornered the market of smartphones? Nobody can compete with a BlackBerry until they did, until they did. Right? Remember AOL? Remember AIM? You know, AOL Instant Messenger? Everybody needed to be on AOL until they didn't, right? That is one of my questions with NVIDIA. I'll be curious to see where they go as a business, just with uh, so much of their value is around this AI hardware. And just as, as the technology, as the stack matures, regardless of what Huawei is doing or Alibaba is doing, I do question uh, what the value proposition there is going to be. Can they, can they take this $4 trillion to springboard into the next future, right? Or are they gonna hit $4 trillion and it's all downhill from there? Uh, be curious, I'll be curious to see where that goes. Uh, and it is, it is actually very interesting with this whole risk five thing. And especially with, with Meta, like Meta is a weird company. Like Mark Zuckerberg is a weird company. Like he's a weird person. And I've gotta say like from a consumer level, from a consumer level, fuck Mark Zuckerberg. From a consumer level, fuck him all to hell. But look, but look, I, I am actually open-minded and, and I do have balanced opinions, right? And here's the thing, like, again, from the consumer, he is a piece of shit. What he has put out into this world has literally killed people and his executives don't give a fuck, right? When Rohingya Muslims were being slaughtered in Myanmar, the fucking Facebook executive said, well, sometimes you gotta crack a couple of eggs. Right, you, you cannot question the pure evil of this piece of shit when he comes to their consumer products. But, but, on a professional level, uh, look, uh, React, Re the React framework that so many people use for their careers, right? That was created and that was provided by Facebook for the technology community. The Llama model, which to be clear is not fucking open source and I don't give a shit what any dumbass meta employee tries to shove down my throat, you dumb fuck. Anyways, right, Llama is not open source, but it is still incredibly impressive. It's an incredibly powerful model. And as long as you have fewer than 700 million monthly users and a couple of other things you have to jump through, it is something that you can use uh, in production. That has been a really good thing uh, that Meta has offered the world. Again, if they start to design these chips on the RISC-V architecture, the curious thing with the RISC-V architecture is that's open source. So how much of what gets uh, designed and created and invented then has to go back into the open source community, that, that could actually be uh, pretty, pretty revolutionary. Um, you know, I still don't think Mark Zuckerberg knows what the fuck he wants to do when he grows up. <laughs> but, but he is throwing out a lot of resources for the people who do know what they want to do when they grow up to actually be able to build stuff. Um, so again, that might actually be a really interesting thing. I think one of the fascinating things with Mark Zuckerberg is he's just trying to dick smack so many people in the tech industry, right? Again, it's like with a llama model, just basically giving the llama model away for free. 
And he did that, you know, before DeepSeek and before all that, right? O open, open AI is saying they should be worth $4 trillion or something ridiculous because of AI. You have all these companies that are running after these AI models. Uh, and the Mark Zuckerberg is just like, ah, or you can use this for free. <laughs> You're just like, fuck. I mean, thank you. <laughs> that's kind of cold, right? Because they don't, because that's the thing. Meta, Meta doesn't make their money directly from artificial intelligence. Again, one of my questions of why they're so in AI is I don't, I don't understand the business logic there. But, but fuck it, they're doing it, right? We see this now with robots, right? They want to create the, the Android of robot operating systems. Now there is robot ROS, robot OS out there. I don't know. Meta, they're doing something with their, their, uh, their, their operating system, which apparently is different. But again, they want to create the Android of robot operating systems. No fucking clue what that has to do with Meta's bottom line. Well, but fuck it. I mean, Android was open source. I think it's open source. Anyways, hey, if you, if you put if you put out a well-designed, easy to maintain robot operating system, I'm not gonna fucking cry over that. Right again, like you say, you start putting out Risk V, this this goes in the mainstream. Maybe this is what, what pushes mainstream Risk V adoption. Uh, and when that gets that gets pushed, uh, you know, pretty hard, uh, that could that could be a revolution on its own. And so that's one of the weird things like with Mark Zuckerberg and Meta. Again, like I say, from a consumer level, they're a bag of dicks. They are a complete and utter bag of dicks. You know, from the professional standpoint, eh, they do some nice things. Eh, they do some good things. That's the, that's the dichotomy. That's the dichotomy of the tech industry for you. Sometimes, sometimes you've got to pat a, dac, a bag of dicks on the back and say, good job. Hey, you're still a bag of dicks, but I appreciate, I appreciate what you just did. So anyways, what do you think about this? What do you think about Meta buying chip startup Revos? What do you think about them creating an AI stack on Risk v What do you think about how generous Mark Zuckerberg is to the tech community? <coughs> Even at the exact same time, he's a complete dick to the consumers. <coughs> put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. Uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and do it down there in the comment section. Do you remember SiliconDojo.com is my pride and joy. We're having our uh, first uh, class in Durham, North Carolina next week. We are going to be having more. So if you're interested in those, make sure to join SiliconDojo.com and stay up to date. And with that, see y'all later.